you design a tool, any tool, you make trade-offs. For example, the person that uh, designed this hammer had to make a trade-off uh, when he designed the head. The head has to be heavy enough to drive nails, and yet it also has to be light enough that you can lift it all day long and pound with it. Uh, so his trade-off was 16 ounces, one pound. That's heavy enough to drive a 16-penny nail in a few seconds, but light enough that you can work with this hammer all day long. Now, the same thing was true when the shopsmith was designed. We uh, wanted to have a multi-purpose tool, a tool that fit in a very small uh, footprint and saved you a lot of space, but still did a good job, uh, was accurate enough to do fine woodworking. Uh, one of the problems we came up against was this table. In, all, in order to, for this table to serve the four functions in which it serves, which is drill press, horizontal boring, sawing, and sanding, this had to tilt through 135 degrees. Now that's more tilting capability that you'll find in any power tool table anywhere. Um, we managed to uh, make it happen by mounting this table on two posts. Uh, problem is, mounted on two posts, there is a little bit of give. Now we, we took out most of that give when we redesigned the table for the 510 and the 520 and we put two locking trunnions front and back. If you have a 510 or a 520 or you uh, have an upgraded 500 that's been upgraded to one of those, uh, you'll probably notice that the table not only is it larger, but it is much, much more rigid. Now, to show you, to show you uh, how rigid this is, I've uh, set this up with this uh, little measuring tool here. Those of you who are machinists will recognize this right away. Uh, this is an old uh, Sterrett dial indicator uh, with the uh, pieces and parts that you need to measure runout. Uh, it was often used when you were drilling large diameter holes to make sure that those holes were absolutely concentric. Uh, by the way, uh, this, um, this piece of equipment was given to us by one of the students who came through the academy and for that we are very grateful. We uh, use this quite a bit. Uh, I've got it set up here and it's going to measure the twist in this table and how closely the table remains aligned with uh, the dado blade that I have set up right here. Um, when you're making dados, when you're running the, the boards across the table, you're usually guiding the boards with a fence. So I'm going to uh, take uh, this table and I'm going to put uh, approximately the same pressure on this table that I would use if I was pressing the wood against a fence. Now if you watch the dial indicator you can see, there we go, there's right and left, you can see that I can move this about five thousandths to the right and five thousandths to the left. That's pretty good. That's pretty darn rigid. Um, the five thousandths plus or minus is, uh, is good for most working woodworking operations. You can do fine woodworking. There are, however, and I can hear you, you machinists out there squirming, there are the, those of us who like to work to closer tolerances. So we have built that in to this system with a little clever engineering. Along with the uh, 510 to the 520, not only get a larger table a, and a larger extension table, you get these connecting tubes, four of them to be exact, and these connecting tubes fit into rails on, on the in-feed and the out-feed sides of the table. If I take my connecting tubes and I use them to tie the main table to the extension table, now all of a sudden my work surface is mounted on four posts, not just two. Do I get twice the, uh, the stability? Take a look. Let's go back here to the dial indicator. It's still on zero. And I'm going to twist it to the right and to the left. 
right and left. I'm using the same pressure I applied before, and as you can see, the stability is now plus or minus one thousandth. That's pretty darn stable. I'm Nick Angler. Keep your corner square and your tables rigid. Thank <laughs> you.